I, always, I was the manager, uh, head cashier for Ralph's Grocery. And I thought I was retiring when I got married. And we had our nice honeymoon to, to Hawaii, came back and he said, well, let's just stop by the shop and see what's been going on while we've been gone. So I said, okay. He had just received the uh, award for 625 uh, schools. And he had to have all the body pads and rugs and everything clean between June and September. Steam by the cleaning business. Right? The business was a steam yeah. cleaning business, right? Right. And so there went my retirement. I didn't know anything about rugs, rug cleaning, body pads or anything, but I learned in a hurry. This guy is a worker. He's, uh, he's just something different, always thought ahead, always had a new plan ahead. Uh, it was just a gift that he had. And so what I learned in the bookkeeping with Ralph and what he already knew. Well, I didn't tell you, uh, his dad had the Natick Hotel in LA, downtown LA. So he grew up learning by his dad about the mechanics of what he had learned. And so the, the two of us just clicked. That's very interesting. Um, his best friend introduced us, Norm Carpenter, and he was a, he he had a boat shop, and so we ended up buying a boat from him, <clears throat> and uh, so we went to Catalina many times. Always kept going to Catalina with them. Finally, we bought our own boat. And then we got into a boat club. There were a hundred members, and we'd go on special weekends for you know the holiday weekends where you had three or four days. And we spent a lot of time diving, getting abalone and Catalina. We'd bring them up and put them on the swim step, pound them out, and cook them right then while they're fresh. Is it true you were literally swimming with sharks, too? Yeah. Yeah, baby sharks. Yes, baby Chuck. Uh, no, he didn't go. He stayed with me. Well, <clears throat> Ted had a problem. His first wife passed away uh, after the baby was born. And so <clears throat> she took the baby and had him for... I think it was four years between her death and our marriage. So he was seven when, when we got married. He stayed with her a lot on weekends so that we made the adjustment a little bit easier on him for a new mom. And it, that worked out really good. He was a good, I, I enjoyed him. The Watts riot came, and the, everybody was shooting across the street and up the street, the cleaners and all that. So Ted came home that night, and he said, we're out of here. We're moving. And that very night at 3 o'clock in the morning, Norm calls us and said, you have to buy my house. And Ted says, are you drunk? <laughs> because he doesn't drink. And he says, no, I'm not drunk, but I bought another house, and I can't afford both of the um, payments. So you're down here every weekend anyway. Why don't you just buy the house? And he says, how much and when? He says, you can move in next week, and it's a good price. I think the payments were $157 a month or something like that. You guys, you also bought a plane. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> he, after his wife passed away, he started taking his lessons and uh, he got his ticket and he wanted to me to take a flight with him. And I said, well, how many hours have you got in? When you get so many, when you get legal, I'll ride with you. He says, I'm legal. So he would fly out. I worked in one of the stores in the valley. So he flew out to pick me up, flew me to Catalina for a buffalo burger and back to work in time. We were always late, but the boss says, as long as you got the job done, because he enjoyed seeing me with a nice guy. The first one I had went to jail for life. We both went through struggles. He lost his wife and I had that problem. And then Norm was our friend together because we used to all water ski together. But I didn't know Ted at that time or he didn't know me. So Norm is the one that put us together. We took a other couple. We had two friends that were flyers. So we'd trade off couples and go down and play tennis for five days. We'd go on Thursday night to as far as La Paz and then the rest of the way stay on one side of the island or the tip and then on the other that way we got both the temperatures. It was, depending how hot it was. Your husband is uh, together with you. He's quite the businessman, quite the entrepreneur, right? And he starts, what is it, the first steam cleaning business in Orange County? Yes, he, he, he was the first one to bring steam cleaning into Orange County. And um, in those days, they were using the rub, rub -a dub you know, where you, the rotating, machine, but it really pushes the dirt down and eventually it works its way up. And so he uh, came up with this, it looked like a coffee pot. It was a big stainless steel, uh, two, two containers. One had the fresh water and then you suck it out and the dirt and it goes into the other container so you're taking the dirt out of the carpets. So he brought that machine into, uh, we bought it from Oregon, a fellow in Oregon. And uh, it was the first time anybody heard about steam cleaning. So he was pretty, we were very busy. <laughs> In the 70s, the big thing was probate homes. If you know what that is, somebody dies, it goes to probate, you go to court and you bid on it. And so Ted went with his realtor to bid on this big piece of property. And uh, uh, they bid and somebody was bidding against him. Bidding. So his realtor said, Judge, can we have 10 minute re recess? We took the other guy out and said, what are you gonna do with the property? He says, I'm gonna build condos. And he said, well, that's what we're gonna do. Why don't we join and quit bidding against each other? So they shook hands in the hall. That's how, how my husband is and how he was. At times I thought, I don't know how I can do all this, but I did. We just did it together. We, we made a fun thing out of it instead of a labor job. And you just had a, did a real estate sale, you were saying maybe the last one. It was exciting and the, and the houses were pretty cheap that we were buying. We would buy a cheap one, fix it up. We had a crew and uh, we knew what we had to do and what we could do do it and we would bid on it. The judge would allow us to go in and work on it. 
and we would have it completely remodeled before we even had to pay the money. So if we can put it on the market and have it sold without putting very much down, just the deposit. And we first moved to Dijon. We had been up on, uh, in the back bay where it's a lot more spacious. And we came down to the smaller one on Dijon and it was kind of claustrophobia. Ted says, I'm, and he's riding his bicycle around and he says, I'm going to the waterfront no matter what. He's riding his bike along Nord and he sees this little business card on the gate. In those days, they had an old wooden gate, if you remember that. And so it was stapled to the gate. So he reads it and it says, open house today from one to two. Now it's kind of weird, isn't it? So he came down to Dijon to me and he says, I'm gonna go look at a house on Nord. I'll be right back, okay. He looks at it and he tells him, I'm, I've got to get my wife. He comes down and he says, now don't get excited about it. Just say, yes, you like it, or no, you don't. <laughs> we got down there and it's beautiful. It's on the corner, it's an extra large lot. It's everything that anybody would want, but it's in terrible shape. So he just said, yes or no, and I, yeah. <laughs> and that's how we, we got it. Looking back on the almost 50 years in Lido, can you give one or two where we can find this memories? I think the people are, everybody talks about the people are so snooty. They aren't, they're just like me. They're just plain Jane, they're not, snooty at all they're really good friends and we are still visiting them and our neighbor that we had did have and they're still alive we've been friends we're still friends we see them more now even at at the bay club uh, than we saw them at home because we're always busy you know but they got so they um, brought us food, brought us, I mean, we, we have good neighbors, and we, I enjoyed Lido. Uh, Ted misses it more than I do, <laughs> because I had to work more of maintaining it, cleaning it, and stuff like that. But I'm very happy where I am now. We geared down. It was time to gear down. We did it at the right time. And, uh, so Ted and I have had a wonderful marriage. We've been married seven, 73 years. 73 years. It looks like it'll work out. Can you believe? <laughs> My mom and dad wondered. <laughs> <laughs>